Good morning, everyone. My name is Charles Morgan, Word is Live Ministries. Uh, most of you probably know that. Appreciate you listening in. And uh, I am so thankful for all the people that I meet that uh, tell me that they listen and uh, that they appreciate it. It's It's been amazing. We took a trip to Minnesota. We've got some people that listen up there. And uh, it's just it's just been amazing, this ministry and the support, the fact that we've been on the air um, away from the church for almost a year now and uh, still getting support to uh, pay for the on-air time and we appreciate that thank you so much for all those that do that for all those that pray for us and and just support us in so many ways and just tell us that they've been praying for us and and uh that we want uh they want us to continue and we just uh we're just so appreciative of that it's just hard for me to express how much i do appreciate that but today's message is going to be from luke luke chapter 12. luke was a physician and even people who don't believe that uh, the Bible is God's word look at Luke's writing, and uh, you know say it's a very well written thing. It's re- obviously written by someone that was meticulous, that took notes, that uh, that uh, could write very well. Uh, he was a physician. Uh, Paul called for him, and he he was a believer. Uh, you know, which tells us that uh, educated people can be believers. Uh, maybe sometimes they let that get in the way, but they can be. But uh, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. Uh, what your education level is. Um, Christ died for you. He died for your sin. So in Luke chapter 12, it says, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they strode uh, one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten of God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, whatsoever, whosoever shall confess me before men, shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring... a you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought of how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. All right. Now I'm going to read a little bit in Matthew too, uh, because this uh, relates the same thing. But I'm going to tell you that the, this this sermon came to me as my wife and I were sitting on our deck, and and we were watching the hummingbirds. And I I, I just have a confession right now. I love watching hummingbirds. I just love them. My uh, uh, kids gave me a hummingbird feeder for Father's Day. I hung it up, and I have just been watching them and enjoying them. I've got about five that come in, and and I just it's amazing to me. Uh, the way they fly and, and the way that uh, they come in and, and just do and, and interact with one another. But we were talking about that God takes care of them, and it came to me, he takes care of the sparrows. My wife was saying that. And so we just uh, looked at that and thought, you know, God is in that business. But then this scripture is so much more than that, and it's all about Jesus. Now there are several things that he says over here in, in Matthew. He says, uh, verse 31, Fear not, therefore ye are more value than any many sparrows you know and he says uh those he that denies me before uh men i'll deny before my father so those things are still the same he said the very hairs are numbered so these these are complementary gospels from matthew to to luke and they complement one another and and uh say the same thing uh from different uh aspects you know the holy ghost used these writers as they would write and, and brought their personalities out in it. And it's just amazing how these things happen. So as we look in Luke again, you know, first of all, it says there's a multitude and they were trolled upon one another. They were on top of one another. There were so many people that wanted to hear Jesus. 
That's still the same today. There's still people that want to hear Jesus, even though they don't know who he is. They don't know that that's exactly who they want to hear. It's our responsibility to take Jesus to them. It's our responsibility to spread that gospel of Jesus Christ. And, he, and I know what you're saying. You, you say that all the time, you know, and I'm going to keep saying it because that's the truth. We have forgotten that in our churches. We have forgotten that in our Christianity. We have gotten away from that to the point where we think it's on somebody else. We've gotten to the point where a fast food people and we're fast food uh, faith as well. We think, well, we can go and pay somebody and they can do it for us and we don't have to be responsible. It's never been the case. But I want you to uh, listen to this. And he's talking about this. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And he talked about leaven, that's yeast, uh, what makes bread grow. And he said, you know, that, that stuff that they're talking, man, it grows and it's not good. He said, it's hypocrisy. It's two-faced. It's not truth. Uh, this hypocrisy comes from a word that means two-faced. It was from the Romans in their theater, and they would uh, come out and hate hell a face in front of them to portray a different character. So uh, one actor could portray many characters by holding this face up, and that's where that comes from. He said they say one thing, but they don't really mean that. They don't really believe it. They tell you things because they want you to do it. See, Christ was just the opposite. He did it, he told it, and he lived it. And that's what we're to do as, as children of God. Folks, we're to live out our faith. Now, it's not a religion. It's our faith, and we're to live that out in every aspect of our life. Is that easy? Again, I'll tell you that no, uh, because the world keeps pulling us in, and we're, we're uh, bound here at this time, but we still are to do it. So he says, beware of that. Don't listen to that. But then he goes on to talk about different things. <clears throat> he, he talks about... He said, therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard. Whatever uh, spoken in ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. What are you talking about? He's talking about prayer. He's talking about talking to him. See, that's what prayer is. Uh, we, I think many times we, we think of prayer as some uh, magic incantation, just like we see on television shows and fantasy stuff. And that's not what it is. It's speaking to Jesus. And, and what, what do we get from this? He said, I hear you. So I, I wrote down here, I said, Jesus hears. Jesus hears us. He hears what we say. He hears what we've got to say to him. You know, we may think, oh, he's not listening, but he does. And that's tough sometimes. You know, it's just like I've told people it's, it's difficult speaking on the radio and on the Internet because I don't have people right in front of me that I can see that are listening or going to sleep or whatever they are because, I, I believe me, uh, throughout my 20-plus years in ministry, I've seen it all. I've seen people go to sleep. I've seen people just on the edge of their seats. You know, I've seen uh, all kinds of things. And you see that reaction. I've seen people kind of lose their attention on it, and you have to bring them back in. But with this, it's difficult. It's difficult because I can't see you as you're listening to me. So when you say, hey, I listen to you, that helps me out. But a lot of times I, I think, and I know I do this with Jesus. I'm, I'm like, are you really listening to me? Well, this tells me yes. This tells me absolutely, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples and says, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You know, um, uh, sometimes my, my wife will get on to me because I didn't respond to her. I'll, I'll just kind of nod, you know, and but I'm listening. I know what she said, but I, I'm not a real responsive person in that way. And, and she'll say, well, did you hear me? And I'll even do that sometimes with my kids. Did you hear me? I just said something. And so we get to that point, but Jesus is saying, you may not get an immediate response, but I am listening to you. I hear what you say. That, that uplifts me. These scriptures uh, cause me to, to just get excited to go, I know that when I pray, he's listening. When I speak to him, he hears me. It's not just that he knows I'm speaking some words. He knows the words I'm speaking. And even more that, he knows my heart. You know, I go back to Mark chapter 2 when he looked up and saw those four and he said he saw their faith. That's amazing to me. He saw their faith. So he sees that in us. He knows that in us. He hurts for us. When he went to the tomb of Lazarus, he wept. Why? Because he had compassion on those around him. He had compassion for those. So much so it said, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible, uh, you know, John eleven thirty eight, and and people know it. But why did he do that? Two words, because he felt for them. He had 
compassion on them. Even though he knew I'm going to speak and he's going to come forth. But he felt with them. See, it wasn't just sympathy. It was empathy. And there's a difference. Empathy is you feel for that person. And so that he did that. Jesus hears you today. If you cry out to him and you tell him, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to accept that free gift of salvation because I know that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. I know that wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. I want that gift. He'll give it to you. He hears you. And he will hear you from there on out every time you speak to him. He's always with you. Jesus hears. And he said, he goes on to say, uh, don't don't be afraid of those that can just kill the body. Folks, I don't know what trouble is going to come in, in before Jesus comes back. I know it says perilous times. I have no idea. don't know when it's going to happen. I see the things unfolding, and I say, that really looks like it. But I, I know that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people have told me that in times past, you know, that they thought this. Uh, uh, they thought Napoleon was the Antichrist. They thought others were the Antichrist and felt like this was the time. We don't know that time. Uh, we can look at these these signs and say this this has got to be it, and and I really feel like we, you know we are very close. Uh, and I know one thing, and I've said this before: we're closer today than we were yesterday. But we're supposed to continue on and act as if we're working for Him every day, as if we know He's coming back, and we understand that, and we're ready for that. And we got to tell others about that. But He said, "Don't worry about those. Worry about the one that can." Do something beyond the, the physical body. Folks, we need to be about his business. This is serious business. It's life and death. You know, the person you meet is teetering on that. You need to tell them about life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We need to, we need to take that to him. He said, and then he goes on to talk about sparrows. The sparrows are little bitty birds. Uh, they were brought to this country and, you know, shouldn't have been. I mean, they've been prolific. <laughs> they, they go everywhere, uh, make a mess everywhere they go, but they're they're very little birds. Uh, and that's what brought me to that with the hummingbirds. I mean, they're so small, and yet God provides for them. You say, well, you put the feeder out. God provided for all of it. Somebody gave me the feeder. We've got the water in there. You know, God provides for them in many ways. If that feeder wasn't out there, they'd still be provided for God values us. That's what he says. He said, the sparrows are so small. He said, but you're greater than the sparrows. You know, or Matthew says, you're more valued to me than these sparrows. He said, the very hairs on your head are numbered. And I, I always make this joke because I always look out and I see somebody, you know, some man that's lost most of his hair. And I say, well, you're making it easier on God. You know, uh, yeah, so... It's, it's funny. So if you're a bald man out there getting mad at me, it's, it's funny. Um, God knows that. What does that mean? He knows everything about us. He knows us so intricately. And it's much more than the sparrows. He said, I value you. Jesus values you. He died on the cross for you. That's how much he values you. He gave his self on the cross. He said, well, I thought that they nailed him to it and they killed him. He gave himself up. He was the only one that could do that. See, the high priest was responsible for making the sacrifice every year for the people. And he would make atonement for himself. And then he would go in and make the sacrifice for the people. He had to make that atonement because he didn't measure up either. So he'd make atonement for himself so that he could be worthy of at that point, to go and stand before God and make this sacrifice. Jesus Christ was worthy. He didn't have to make atonement for himself. He was sinless. He already was atoned. He was already sinless. He had lived that sinless life. So he brought himself as that sacrifice, and he did that himself. He cried out, it's finished. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, if there's any other way but your will be done, he knew what was going to be about. And in that physical body, uh, he felt that anguish. But yet he did exactly what he's supposed to do. And so he gave that free gift to you. That's what it is today. It's a free gift. The gift of God 
He's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the only one. We need to tell people about life. We need to tell people that Jesus values them. We can look at people and we may say, well, they're not worth it. Well, neither are we. Neither are you. Neither am I. None of us are worthy for salvation. That's the reason it has to be a free gift. We can't work our way. There's no way we can do what we should in order to get saved. If we could do that, Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to come. We cannot live a sinless life. You say, well, why why should we even try? Because it's worth the try. It's worth the attempt to be like Christ, to do everything we can, to know that even when we mess up, we can take it to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I want to repent. I want to turn away from that. He values you. You were so valuable to him, he died on a cross for you. He didn't die for the sparrows. He didn't die for the the, uh, wolves out there. He didn't die for any other animal. He died for his creation, the one he created for fellowship with him because he wants to have that fellowship again. And he gave the free gift. told Nicodemus, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The world, everyone, he died for you. Jesus values you more than the sparrows. I want you to understand that today. I want you to know it in your heart, in your mind, everything about you. I want you to understand. If you haven't got that free gift of salvation, I want you to accept it today. Say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I don't know everything about the Bible. You don't have to. But I know that I'm a sinner. I know that what I've done is not working. I know that that free gift is eternal life. I know that it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know it says that you're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Please, Lord, I want to turn my life over to you. I want to give it all to you, and I want to accept that free gift. He values you. He values you that much. And in verse 8, we go on and said, I've got Jesus saves. He said, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also be confess before the angels of God. In uh, Matthew, it talks about that I'll confess them before God. He said, in other words, you confess me, you belong to me. I'll confess you before God. But if you deny me, I can't do that. You see, this is the, the thing about it. He can't do that. If you will not accept the free gift, he cannot take and say, Lord, this is it. He can't accept you into heaven. Your name's not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't care if you've been uh, the greatest philanthropist in this world has ever seen, that you you can uh, commit yourself to all kinds of charities, and, and at Christmas time you buy uh, gifts for everyone. It doesn't matter if you do that. It will not save you. You will be judged about it if you are saved and about what you do. And we've talked about that, the judgment. But the only way to accept the free gift is to go to the Jesus Christ. It's the only way. You go to him and you accept that. And he says, I will confess you. But he said, those that that don't, he said, I'll deny you before my father. Why? Because he can't do that. He can't have sin in heaven. That's the reason he died on the cross. There was broken fellowship by Adam. We can all get mad. We can blame Adam for everything. And I get upset at him. I look at him and I go, why in the world would he have done that? He messed it all up for everyone. But that's the way it is. But God had a plan. He said, this is the plan. I'm going to give myself. I'm going to give myself up. I'm going to die for my own creation, the very ones that turned against me. Can you imagine that? You know, just think about this. You've got people in your life that you like, that are kind to you, that you are kind to them, that you treat them with respect. They treat you with respect as well. Then you've got people that don't like you for whatever reason. Maybe it's valid, maybe it's not, and you'll have both of those in your lifetime. How do you treat them? Would you give your life for them? Even though they've turned against you, even though they say bad things about you, I think the honest answer would be probably not. But yet that's what Jesus did. The very ones that turned against him are the ones that he said, I'm going to save them. That's us. Everything he created, he created by speaking it into existence except for us. And he made us. Formed a man out of the dust of the earth. Formed woman out of his rib. She came from him, which came from the dust. We returned to dust. But yet he created us. He breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. Different than all creation. 
that creation denied him, turned against him, and yet he gave himself for that creation. Died on a cruel death on a cross. Made that sacrifice and said, I have defeated death. That death that was a punishment of sin is no longer if you'll accept the free gift. Jesus saves. He saves us. He says, I will bring you to him. But he that denieth me before man shall be denied before the angels of God. He said, you know, he said, if you deny me, I won't know you. You know, Matthew, he talks about that. He said, depart from me. You work in equity. He said, I never knew you. That's a sad statement. Very sad. And we don't want that for you. We don't want that for anybody. We, as children of God, should never want that for anybody in our life. We should always want them to get saved. We should want them to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. He said, whosoever shall speak it against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. He said, I can take it. I can take it. But in him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall be not be forgiven. The Holy Ghost is the one that draws you in. When you deny that, when you speak against the Holy Ghost, you don't have to say it audibly, but you say, I don't want that free gift. That's the one. It won't be forgiven. When you don't accept the free gift of salvation, you don't get into heaven. That's all there is to it. Now, you may believe different, but the Bible says exactly what it says, and it says you have to accept Christ. You have to accept that free gift in order to get into heaven. You may look at all these other religions and go, well, they do this and this. The Bible says they're wrong. Why do you think there are converts coming out of those other religions? Then once they get the Bible in their hands, they go, I don't know why no one ever told me this. See, they're false. They're misleading people. If they're not about Jesus Christ, they're not about the truth. Because he said that in John 14, 6, I am the truth. I'm the way. He's the only way. The way. I am the truth. You know, we look at our world today and we say, well, what is truth? Mankind, twist it. Why, why is murder against the law? Because the Bible says it's wrong. Why is stealing against the law? Because the Bible says it's wrong. Why is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost wrong? Because the Bible says it's wrong. You see, all these things are laid out in the Bible, but yet we got people that want to deny it. They want to twist it and they want to say, well, yeah, I know it says that, but we've evolved since then we haven't changed a bit we may have new gadgets but mankind has not changed a bit you take away all the new stuff we've got all the uh, technology all of that stuff people are still just people you read of what go was going on in the bible what was happening in the garden of eden people have not changed we are still the same we are still the same jesus saves but it's on his terms not ours and that's what it boils down to. Too many people, and maybe you're one of them, you're out there, well, well, me and God, me and God, you know, we, we uh, had this conversation. I've had people tell me this. I had a conversation with God. Me and him came to terms. No, you didn't. You either accept his terms or there are no terms. You know, and, I, and I'm, again, I've had so, so many people tell me this. Well, I made, I made a, a deal with God. No, you didn't. You made a deal with yourself, and you may have made it with Satan. Or one of his demons, whoever you were talking to, it wasn't God. Because the only way you can come to God is to come to him and go, I don't have a deal. I don't have anything to bring to you. I don't have anything that I can offer. Lord, I have nothing at all. And I know it. I know because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one. And the only thing that I've earned is death. And I don't want that. I want the free gift. I want to accept your deal. You know, it's like going to a bank, you know, and they lay out the contract. If you don't sign your name on the line, you don't get it. If you don't accept their terms and their interest rate, you say, well, I can negotiate it down, but you still have to accept whatever they put on that paper. You have to agree to it. And you can't later on go, you know what? I didn't really agree to that. Well, then you never agreed to it in the first place, did you? 
See, a lot of people are that way. They say they say they got saved, but they never did. They never truly accepted the agreement. They may have got their name on a roll book, but they are not saved. You may be one of those people that never truly accepted the free gift. You've been going about living a lie, and you know it. You say, well, you're pretty harsh. No, I want you to get saved. I want you to know that. If you're not living a life for Christ, you've got to wonder why not. If you don't value Christ's people, if you don't value Christ's church, if you don't value Christ and that life that he has given you, why not? Why not? Now, I'm not telling you you're not saved. You have to decide that. But if you are saved, you ought to rejoice in it and know that Jesus hears you, he values you, he saves you, and then he protects and provides. Listen to this. He said, and when they bring you unto the synagogue and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. Now, we don't think about this a lot because we're not getting dragged in front of people. But what if we were? What if you were dragged? What if somebody comes up and talks to you and says, hey, I don't believe in this stuff. What are you going to say? He's saying, take no thought for that. Why? Because he's going to provide. It says it right there. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. He's going to give you those words. How do you do that? First of all, you accept the free gift. You accept what the Holy Ghost has provided for you. You take that. You are indwelt with the Holy Ghost. You live after that. You have a relationship with Christ. You speak with him all the time so he can hear you and know he values you, know that you're saved. And when those times come, you say, I need some help. Lord, give me some words. Give me something to say. Give me those words that would do the most good here, that would not harm you. He said, I'll give them to you. Holy Ghost is going to bring them up, and you're going to go, wow, who said that? I didn't, I didn't have those words. I didn't know those things to say. But yet there it is. It's all there. That's what it's about. So I'm telling you, when you have personal evangelism that's going and talking to people about Jesus Christ, you pray before you go there. If you've got someone you're going to talk to about Jesus Christ, if you're going to do anything, I don't care what it is, uh, VBS or anything, you pray about that and you say, Lord, guide my words. Make sure that I'm speaking the truth. And I recently told some guys, I've had people in churches, they've come to me and said, well, you know, I didn't like what you said. And I'm asking, well, what was untruth about it? Well, nothing. It was true, but I just didn't like the way you said it. Well, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry if you don't like the way I speak and the way I tell you things. But I don't have time to just mess around and sugarcoat it to the point that you go, I don't even know what he talked about. I'm telling you right now, if you die without Jesus, you're going to hell. That's the truth. If you have Jesus in your heart, if you have given your life over to him, you're going to want to live for him. Your fruit is going to show that. Those things are going to be reflected in you. And if you uh, encounter somebody, Jesus is going to give you the words to speak. That's the truth. I know it by the Bible. I know it by experience. Here's the other truth. Jesus doesn't want anybody to die without him. He says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance is not just telling God, oh, I'm sorry for what I did. Repentance is saying, Lord, I've sinned against you. I don't want to do that anymore. It's not making a deal with him. It's accepting exactly what he said and doing exactly what he has told you to do. You've probably heard more preachers than me tell you this. If you're sitting out there and you're lost, you need Jesus Christ. If you're miserable, you need Jesus Christ. If you don't know what's going on, you say, oh, I just don't know. I don't have any peace. You need Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ in your life. And I know there's people that listen to me right now that are lost as they can be. You need to accept that free gift of salvation. Say, Lord, I do accept it, and I want to go to heaven. I don't want to be denied because I didn't do the things I should, which is there's only one, and accept the free gift. You can't work your way into heaven. You can't be nice enough. You can't be kind enough. You can't give enough money. He gave it all so that you could have that free gift. On the cross... Of Calvary, he said, It is finished. That means he did it. That means he finished it. He did everything he had to do. Won't you accept that free gift? 
And if you've accepted that free gift, once you know that Jesus hears you, he values you because he saved you and he will provide for you. You say, well, what about the other stuff? Matthew 6, said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. It was food and clothing. He provides that too. Won't you accept the free gift today? My name is Charles Morgan. I'm with Word is Live Ministries. Thank you again for listening, supporting us with prayers, uh, monetary donations. Uh, you can go to our website, wordislive.org, and see all the things that, that we try to do and it'll lead you to our Facebook page and YouTube and all that. I thank you so much for allowing me to be with you today. hope that your life is blessed, and I hope that you will accept Christ.